Okay, you guys, so we're going to continue on our discussion of our central limit theorem and specifically how it relates to proportions or our categorical data. So, like, this is another powerful thing about our normal distribution is that it can be applied uh, to more than just means. Okay, so we have been kind of building off of this equation. This is E equals X minus mu divided by sigma. So this was our original equation that was talking about like how far is a specific measurement from the mean in terms of how many standard deviations. Okay, but this was only applicable with the if the original population was normally distributed. Then in previous videos we've introduced the idea that hey, in fact the sample mean is also normally distributed centered about the original population mean with a new standard deviation, standard deviation with respect to x bar. And we calculate out that standard deviation by doing sigma x bar is equal to sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay, so this one can be used for any original, original distribution if n is bigger than 30. So for any original distribution, if n is bigger than 30, or if the original distribution is normally distributed, then we can have uh, a, any sample size that, that we want. So if um, our original distribution, our x, is normally distributed, um, no limit or no min on sample size. Okay, and then we're going to take it, like I said, one step further. We can adjust this equation yet again, and here's why. So, when we talk about our estimators, we've got a couple of different types. So, let's do just a quick review. So, we've got, let's start off with our parameters. We have mu, which is the mean. We have p, which is the population uh, proportion, and we have sigma. And then we have what are called uh, estimators. So like our unbiased estimators, point estimators. So if they're unbiased, it means that they're going to be centered about the population value. So here we go. We know that mu, our estimator, is x bar, the sample mean. P is the sample proportion. And mu is s. And we're just going to focus on these top two. Now from this, we know that the expected value of x bar is equal to mu. Or that if we were to do a sample a bunch of times uh, from the population, and we took those averages, those averages would eventually average out to be the population mean. And so we see this written sometimes as mu x bar. All right, so now let's look at the uh, at this proportion, so the sample proportion. The expected value of the sample proportion is the population proportion, which means that these average out, or the sample proportions, average out to the population proportion. And you'll see this written sometimes as mu of p hat. Okay, and then from each of these we learned well, let's, we learned that, okay, how do we calculate now the standard deviation with respect to x bar? Now we need to learn how to do it with respect to p hat. All right, so let's continue on real quick. So let's convert this equation. Let me change markers real quick. So we've got z equals, again, z, z, z. So these are all ultimately normally distributed, or the samples uh, distributions are normally distributed. And we're going to replace this x bar with p hat. And we're going to do p hat minus p divided by sigma, and I bet you can guess it, sub p hat. So we basically just tweaked this equation just a little bit to be able to accommodate our proportions. And now let's learn how we calculate out this sigma value. So this is going to be sigma p hat is equal to, I'm going to write it in two forms, the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. 
So that's one way that we can think about it. There's another way that we can do this. We can say that this is equal to the square root of p times q divided by n. And we know that, I guess I'll put it over here, that q equals 1 minus p. OK, so this means, like from our central limit theorem, that we can use the normal distribution to talk about the distribution of the sample proportions, which is great. It allows us to expand that idea of a normal distribution with respect to categorical variables or with these population or with these proportions. OK, there is a caveat, though. Notice down here how there is this caveat for using um, the normal distribution for the sample proportion, like if it's um, if the any original distribution we'll put up here not normal not normal so if the original distribution is not normal then the we have to have a sample size of at least 30 over here if it is normally distributed then there's no minimum on the sample size over here we don't get to get away with this if it's normally distributed we have to have a minimum sample size and how we determine this is that we want n times p uh, to be greater than, and we're going to put in 15, and then n times 1 minus p is also greater than 15. You'll also see this written as n times q. Those two are the same. Okay, so what's this saying is that we want to know, like let's say we go out and do a survey and we want to know the, the proportion of people who own a truck. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to basically say the number of people who responded to our survey who own a truck, we want that to be above 15. And then the number of people who don't have a truck, we also want that to be above 15. Or we want the number of people with the trait and the number of people without the trait to both be greater than 15. Now in different books and different places you'll see this limit as different values. Sometimes you'll see it as low as 5. I think technically our book uh, goes by uh, as little as 10, um, but we're going to stick with 15. 15 is a little conservative. It makes it so that our sample size has to be a little bigger, but it helps ensure that the distribution, that the sample distribution is actually normally distributed. And then I'll go over specifics of how to do these calculations in our software videos. Good luck.